Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the Technology Mechanism side event, where the two arms of the mechanism, the Technology Executive Committee and the CTCN, the Climate Technology Centre and Network, will be presenting their work from over the last year to support technology uh, implementation for countries as they seek to deliver their commitments under the Paris Agreement. To start things off, I'd like to introduce Dr. Anala Anger Kravi, who is the Vice Chair of the UNFCCC Subsidiary Body for Scientific and Technological Advice and a Senior Research Associate at Cambridge Institute for Sustainability and Leadership. Thank you. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to be invited to speak here today at this, um, technology this year's Technology Mechanism Site event. Achieving the aims and ambitions of the Paris Agreement is not granted. It takes time to turn, turn over two centuries of development based on fossil fuels and extraction of natural resources into an all-embracing sustainable path for every child, woman, Man, man and nation. Climate change mitigation and adaptation technologies play a key role in these transitions into a low emission and climate resilient sustainable development pathway. Many re renewable technologies are now commercially viable and widely deployed. But that's not enough. We need to scale up and accelerate our efforts on technology to meet the climate challenge. Therefore, in 2010, countries established the technology mechanisms, mechanism. It consists of two complementary bodies, the Technology Executive Committee and the Climate Technology Center Network. So these are the policy arm and implementation arm of the mechanism. Um, the performance and activities of the technology mechanism in 2017 highlight that the mechanism is responding to country needs as well as supporting the implementation of the Paris Agreement. To date, the Climate Technology Centre network has received almost 200 requests from more than 70 countries, which clearly shows that there is a need for its services. CT, CTCN services are free of charge and demand for these services is growing fast. In 2017, the Technology Executive Committee analyzed key, key climate technology issues and identified policies that can address these and accelerate policy country efforts. Key focus areas this year include South-South cooperation, technological innovation, and industrial energy and material efficiency. The committee also worked on a methodology to monitor technology needs assessment results and on how to help countries to align technology needs assessments with nat national adaptation plans. Uh, furthermore, together these two bodies are responding to, re to requests from the subsidiary bodies to support their, uh, their elaboration of the technology framework, a key element of the Paris Agreement work program. It is pleasing that the technology mechanism is delivering significant results and it is also timely. The mechanism will need to play a key role in the following years to support countries' efforts to transition onto low carbon and climate resilient sustainable development pathways. Thank you. Thank you. The rest of the evening will actually be split into two pieces, uh, with the first being presentations and a question and answer period um, regarding the tech activities, and then that will be followed by a similar portion on the CTCN. So to start the, the tech component off, I'll introduce um, actually the CTCN Advisory Board Chair, Meta Moylestu, who will be moderating this section. Thank you, Karina. Very much. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, good evening, everyone. It's very good to be here. 
Thank you, uh, Dr. Ang Angera Kravi, for your introduction. We are very pleased to, to have you here and, and, uh, and framing our discussions uh, tonight. As Karina said, we are dividing this uh, event into two uh, parts. And um, Mr. Michael Rantel, uh, he, which is the chair of the Technology Executive Committee, or TEC in short, um, he will uh, start um, giving us an overview of the tech activities and achievements in uh, 2017. Michael, please. Thank you, you Mette. Um, as as, as Mette introduced, uh, uh, I will make an overview of the tech acti activity. Uh, I will talk about our mandate, uh, key achievement, publications, the key messages we produced and uh, some words about stakeholder engagement in our work, challenges and lessons and, and uh, future activities. But first some words about who we are. We are the policy arm of the technology mechanism. We are uh, 20 experts working together, 10 from developing country and, and 10 from developed country. And uh, our key outputs are uh, policy recommendation on technology issues in a, in a wider sense, also not only hardware, uh, also policy, uh, on policy related issues related to, to um, technology development and transfer. <clears throat> to um, fulfill our um, uh, man mandate, the tech uh, Organize, or we organize our work in, in uh, a rolling work plan. And uh, uh, under these three headings here uh, in the work stream, uh, we have uh, uh, task forces working with different uh, activities and, and areas. Um, we uh, work closely with partners and stakeholders, as I mentioned. Uh, and this involvement uh, and support uh, is, is uh, crucial for achieving a meaningful outcome, we think. Our key partner is uh, our sister body, the Climate Technology Center Network, and we work very closely together with them. Uh, especially this year, I think we've done a lot of uh, cooperative work, um, and we really look forward to continuing working together. We also work uh, closely with uh, other uh, UNFC, uh, CC uh, constituted bodies uh, and uh, operating entities of the financial mechanism, the GCF and GEF, and also the high level climate cham champions. Furthermore, we have worked throughout the year with the United Nations organizations, intergovernmental organizations and non-governmental organizations which have provided very important contribution to the work of, 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 of tech, and uh, they also participated in our task forces, which has been very valuable. So we think we have been quite productive this year. We have had a, a quite heavy workload. Um, through our work plan, we have focused on uh, supporting countries to acc accelerate the implementation of technology policies and projects related to their nationally determined contribution and national adaptation plans. We concentrated our efforts on uh, catalyzing action to achieve both the Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals. Our work has uh, um, revolved around six key areas which you see here, adaptation, uh, climate technology, financing, emerging and cross-cutting issues, innovation and research, especially we spent a lot of time on this year, uh, development and demonstration, and mitigation technologies and technology needs assessment. Also the latter has been uh, emphasis this year. Um, enhancing technology development and transfer for low emission and climate resilient development also contributes to achieve and, uh, achieving um, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. In uh, this year, 
the work of the tech has uh, support, supported efforts to achieve goals number 2, 6, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 17. And the committee um, also engaged with the technology facilitation me mechanism, which was established under 2030 uh, Agenda for Sustainable de Development to strengthen ties between technology bodies, supporting climate and sustainable development efforts. So during the year uh, 2017, uh, the tech organized three events, one on uh, uh, a symmetric test session on innovative policies and technologies. We hosted this uh, during the term on mitigation in 2017 in May. And during this session, key actors discussed how innovative approaches to urban planning, policies, and technology solutions can deliver emission reductions and generate sustainable development benefits in cities. We also uh, held a thematic dialogue on industrial energy efficiency in March in conjunction with our uh, Tech 14 meeting. And we also uh, had held a special event on inv innovation in May, during the SP46, where we had around 80 experts on climate change and innovation and uh, based on this workshop, the committee identified key recommendations on innovation and published a policy brief, which I will touch upon uh, later on in this presentation. So some uh, key publication from, from our work is, uh, is uh, the tech brief on South-South cooperation and triangular co cooperation. This one described how countries can harness South South and triangular cooperation to accelerate the exchange of adaptation technologies, knowledge and practice in the water and agricultural sector. We also produced a, a tech brief on technological innovation for the Paris Agreement. This um, brief provides insights on how the power of innovation can accelerate the implementation of nationally determined contribution and national adaptation plans. And finally, uh, we uh, uh, produced a brief on industrial energy and material efficiency in emission-intensive sector, which explores policy options for um, scaling up the use of energy-efficient technologies in the in industrial sectors. And um, we periodically publish uh, tech briefs and will continue to do this in this way. We also uh, produced other materials, such as um, um, summary, uh, executive summaries for target uh, groups on, uh, on industrial energy and material efficiency to target stakeholders, uh, and, uh, and so on. Um, and uh, Let's see if I'm right now. Uh, yes, and uh, we also uh, compile, uh, uh, co co made a compilation of the best practice for South South cooperation and adaptation technologies. Uh, we made a working paper on uh, enhancing financing for research, development, and demonstration of climate technologies, and. Uh, Finally, a technical paper on, not finally, but a technical paper on industrial energy efficiency, material substitution, and carbon intensive sectors. And finally, uh, an article uh, which pub was published for the, the COP on harnessing the potential in of industrial energy efficiency for low emission future. And um, we produced uh, key messages on in, in which we think uh, uh, crucial, important areas. Um, we do this every year. For uh, seven, 2017, we provided key messages on TNAs, innovation, industrial energy, and material efficiency, and then in emission 
intensive sectors. Regarding uh, TNA, the, mess the key message is that the te technology action plans should be used to, by parties and other relevant stakeholders to uh, bridge the gap between planning and Im implementation and contribute to the enhancement of NDCs and NAPS implementation. And uh, we have uh, uh, developed methodology in, in, in on, uh, on TNAs, which can be a base for this work. And um, in the next presentation, uh, Claudia Octaviana, my colleague, will give you details on the message on uh, innovation and industrial energy efficiency. So we have uh, reflected in our rolling work plan a uh, decision at COP21, um, including the request to both Tech and CTN to support the implementation of the Paris Agreement. Um, we have uh, initiated the consideration of the issue of development and enhancement of uh, endogenous uh, capacity and technologies by exploring the concept and scope of uh, endogenous capacities and te technologies, and we will continue that work. We uh, included a lot of work in, on R&D in our uh, uh, work plan and uh, continue to work uh, on this issue, and we will uh, also work together with GCF and CTCN on their, their call, which will be launched um, uh, next year. We also prepared an information note to uh, Substa on 47 on activities of the tech that could be rele relevant for the elaboration of the te te technology framework and facilitating enhanced action on technology development transfer. Um, this year, um, the joint annual report, which is, um, which is negotiated right now, um, of both the tech and CTN, it contains a new section on challenges and lessons learned in response to the invitation by COP22. And the key challenges that we identified are how to improve the monitoring and evaluation of the impacts of, of our work, of the tech work. But we also uh, are interested in, in how well we are reaching out to the, our stakeholders. So that would be interesting to hear from the audience later on in the discussion, if you have any views on that. Did you hear about our work and uh, was it usable and so on. Um, so, but, but there has been some positive, positive aspects, um, for example, involvement of stakeholders in our work, as I mentioned before. Um, and uh, also, uh, we have certainly improved our collaboration with CTCN. Um, on, on the future of work, um, we will, uh, I can mention that we will focus on supporting countries to accelerate the implementation of technology policies and, policies and projects related to their national determined contributions and uh, their national ad adaptation plans. We will continue focusing on the six thematic areas which I mentioned before. Uh, we look forward to supporting countries with climate technology policy issues and strengthening our endeavors for the next year. Um, and um, if you would like to know more about what I mentioned here and more details, you can uh, find a lot of information. You can also find all the tech briefs and so on, all our publication on uh, the TT Clear homepage or webpage. So with that, I would like to thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael. It's uh, quite impressive what the tech has uh, achieved uh, this, uh, this, this year. Uh, I note 
with interest that you are collaborating very closely with the, the other mechanisms of the UNFCCC, the WIM, the GCF, the JEF, the CTCN, of course. Uh, it's appreciate, uh, we appreciate that, and 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 also how you how you make the link to the sustainable development goals. It's really good to see that you know the the global uh, frameworks are being bound together also uh, at uh, the tech level. Uh, then our next uh, presenter is Mrs. Claudia Octaviana Villasana. Uh, she uh, is a member of the, the tech and a general coordinator of climate change mitigation for the government of Mexico. Uh, she will present to us tech's uh, work on innovation and energy efficiency. Claudia, please. Thank you very much, Nathan. Nathan um, Good afternoon, uh, everybody. I'm very happy to be here presenting uh, a selection of the work of the tech on these two topics on behalf of my colleagues from, from the tech. So first, uh, we, we highlighted these two topics from the work of this year. So of course, all the other uh, tech briefs and all the other material is, as Michael has indicated, in the website. Uh, so if I can have the next slide. Ah, it's here. Um, you, you can download uh, all the work that I will be making reference from the website. Uh, so first, on technology innovation. As you know, uh, uh, technology innovation is a key issue uh, for the implementation of the Paris Agreement, and therefore uh, tech members have uh, done a lot of work during uh, this year on, on this particular topic. We held a special event on innovation and climate change, and in particular, we gave it a focus on how to help countries implement the NDCs, uh, the national adaptation plans, and how to think about the longer term on the mid-century strategies. Uh, as many of you know, many countries are uh, in the process of developing um, implementation plans for their mitigation, their adaptation actions, and also thinking about how to structure these mid-century strategies. And we think that technology issue uh, can be a key issue for countries to think about, to incorporate the innovation uh, component, and therefore we, we had this work uh, here. Uh, we published a, a paper also that is uh, still a working paper on enhancing uh, financing for research uh, development and deployment. And in this work, uh, we found uh, several things, in particular uh, regarding the status of information of financing and how can we start thinking about uh, enhancing uh, the, the, the resources that we dedicate uh, to this very important topic uh, of the technology uh, cycle. Uh, and next, we also did a tech big of innovation that Michael also highlighted here, and, and you can have uh, this uh, in the website. Uh, and from all these activities, we structure some recommendations for the COP. Uh, and these uh, recommendations are uh, messages that we want, that, that we think countries could find useful and the COP can uh, have as recommendations for, for parties that want to move forward on structuring uh, and thinking about innovation policy in their own countries. Uh, and, and not only in their own countries, but also think a little bit broader on, on how can innovation facilitate cooperation among countries in the convention. So this is the overarching uh, message, and it is to achieve uh, the goals of the Paris Agreement. Uh, there is a pressing need to accelerate and strengthen technological innovation so that it can deliver environmentally and sound, cost-effective and better performing climate technologies on a larger and more widespread scale. Um, but of course, there is no one uh, size fits all approach, and therefore innovation needs to focus on different approaches. Uh, that are needed for different countries in the world. And um, this is uh, very important because uh, as, as we start understanding innovation and innovation and enabling environments, uh, there, there needs to be targeted interventions in different countries that uh, actually respond to the needs that countries have uh, to innovate. Uh, and therefore, this is one of the key messages that we had for the COP. Also, uh, we had um, the, the tech event on innovation. And we have a very short video here that uh, I think it would be good uh, to, to present. It's a very short uh, video. So if we can, let me see if this will do it. 
It works. Hopefully we'll hear a sound. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and a very warm welcome to you all to this special event on how innovation can support the implementation of the national determined uh, contributions and mid-century strategies. We define here technology, technolo technological innovation as the process that we engage in to research, develop, demonstrate, deploy and widely diffuse climate technologies. So technology is critical to achieving not just the objectives of climate change, but also the objectives for sustainable development. Climate technology innovation is a foundation on which we can build solutions. Through innovation, we can reduce costs of technologies, improve their performance, and build the global capacity and knowledge to bring new technologies from the research labs to the world. So we have to, to, to cross the innovation in green finance and the innovation in technological solutions for fighting rewarming. Also with um, adaptation, um, a lot more is happening as the climate continues to change and uh, we will not be able to adapt um, efficiently if we continue business as usual. So innovation is very, very important. The good thing is that all countries have gone through a lot of thinking and presented their NDCs. So it's fairly clear what their broad goals are. It's also fairly clear that this, in order to meet those goals, those countries will need to bring in policies that pull more and more people to adopt those technologies. Innovation, in my perspective, require four key prerequisites. The first one, you need leadership, but system leadership and then this is a kind of leadership that can galvanize, that can coordinate, that can stimulate the global leadership. You need institutions and then you need finance and then how you address at the same time the imperative of the short term and the long term perspective uh, imperative. Climate is a long term imperative. And then getting out of starvation in some country is a very pressing imperative. There is a possibility to bring those two together. And that requires regulation to, and incentives to stimulate the right kind of innovation. So the political system, governments are very, very important. Please, let's not look at innovation as only about technology. I think this is a mistake that we made before where we looked at innovation to mean technology. Innovation means innovative finance. It means innovative business models. Pay-as-you-go models fit in particularly here. The next step from here, we will take what is coming out from here and work that we have done previously. And uh, from that, together, we will come up with a technology, with a tech brief and um, some, um, some summaries for policymakers, which we will take forward to the COP. Thank you. So that's our work on innovation. And next I would like to discuss or uh, show to you some of our work on industrial energy efficiency. As Michael told you, we held a thematic dialogue on, on this issue uh, during our tech uh, meeting in March. And um, we had a really interesting dialogue with experts on um, industrial energy efficiency. Uh, these uh, thematic dialogues are webcast and we can share these with uh, with other stakeholders that, that can connect uh, to these thematic dialogues, but it's also important that this serve as a starting of our discussion of what will be important for countries uh, on these issues. And those discussions are then uh, used uh, to produce our tech briefs, and in this case, uh, this tech brief has some of the recommendations and some of the things that we found very important for countries thinking about energy efficiency measures in their mitigation um, and NDC uh, plans. So um, this is uh, some of the good practice, the, the tech brief that we had on this had some of the good practices uh, that countries around the world are having, both at the domestic level, but also uh, we had some experiences of countries collaborating on the issue of energy efficiency. 
and how technology transfer can actually be accomplished on the ground. Uh, it has deepened our understanding uh, also on some of the potential limitations of this, of this measure. Uh, Michael also mentioned to you that we also decided not just to have one tech brief, but also to have specific briefs targeting different audiences. And we also believe this is important uh, because some experts on the finance community might not be experts in particular issues of technology, uh, but uh, then we can not address uh, our recommendation to a specific audiences. So uh, please feel free to download any of, of those uh, depending on, on your needs. So the key messages uh, coming out of, of that work is that um, industrial energy efficiency, of course, uh, has uh, to have a specific policies and programs. And uh, for example, some of these programs can help setting long-term strategies and targets that are very important uh, for these policies to work. Uh, it's also important to raise awareness uh, about the potential costs and benefits for industrial energy efficiency. We found that uh, this issue of not being aware of the full uh, range of benefits that industrial energy, energy efficiency uh, technology adoption and transfer can have um, in, in the different economies. And, and this is a very straightforward policy, but it seems that it, it is lacking in many countries. And we also uh, found that uh, enhancing capacities of various actors will be needed for this uh, specific uh, mitigation option. So with this, I thank you for your attention and um, we'll be happy to take some questions. Thank you very much, uh, Claudia, e to present uh, this uh, very important part of, of the tech uh, of the tech uh, work, both on innovation and uh, energy efficiency. Uh, I do highly recommend to read the text briefs uh, and and then the the summary ones that you do for target groups. I read the one for policymakers, and it was uh, very interesting. So I thank you very much much for that. Um, Yes, before we go to the next uh, speaker, uh, I just wanted to, to thank uh, the vice chair of the SUBSTA that uh, she was able to, to join her us here tonight. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, your contribution uh, is good, and we are happy that you also, maybe we have given you some more insight into the technology mechanism. Uh, I suggest that we all give her a hand. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for the invitation, and I wish you a successful side event. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anela. Uh, then we will um, move to our next uh, presenter. Uh, we are. No, isn't. Yes, um, Mr. Mr. Stephen Minas, Assistant Professor uh, of Law at the School of Transnational Law of Beijing University, a Senior Research Fellow in the Transnational Law Institute, and Visiting Lecturer and PhD Candidate at the Dixon Poon School of Law. And he's going to give us some perspective as observer to the technology mechanism. Please, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Meta, and good evening. I've been asked to talk about how the Technology Executive Committee is engaging uh, with stakeholders, but particularly stakeholders through its task forces. So as has already been mentioned, uh, the Technology Executive Committee is a unique asset that we have under the Climate Change Convention and also now under the Paris Agreement. Of course, it brings together experts in climate technology uh, through its membership, but it also goes beyond that, and it directly engages with diverse groups of stakeholders uh, through its task forces in particular. And here, the Technology Executive Committee is engaging in a very inclusive mode of work in which uh, stakeholders, observers from the various uh, constituencies under the convention such as the business community, research community, environmental NGOs, and others, uh, engage directly in the work under the Technology Executive Committee through its task forces. Uh, so these task forces can be seen as platforms to mobilize the expertise of both the tech members, 
uh, but also the non-tech members who are participating as observers. Uh, the work proceeds uh, in a very dynamic way, focused on outcomes, and even within the engaged constituencies such as business and research, there is tremendous diversity of expertise available um, to take the research uh, community. We have lawyers, we have people from the hard sciences, from the social sciences, to take the business community, people engaged in uh, the energy business, but also in manufacturing and other processes. And all of these uh, participants come together in the Technology Executive Committee's task forces and give of their expertise, uh, but in a particularly focused way, responding to COP mandates, which I'll come to. Um, and to take the example of the uh, executive summaries of the work which has just been produced on industrial energy efficiency, it was particularly helpful to have people in, engaged in the task force who are actually coming from these communities of national public policy makers, international organisations, uh, the business community and others, in developing targeted messages uh, which was of particular relevance uh, to the targeted um, audiences. So to look at the task force work, and the important thing to, to note here is that although there is this diversity of uh, expertise and communities, uh, the work is responding directly to COP mandates. So we have the legitis legitimacy that comes from the direct mandates of the parties under the Convention and the Paris Agreement, uh, and then the Technology Executive Committee is drawing on these task forces to help its perform its work. And in recent years in particular, we have seen the COP uh, relying quite heavily on the tech and uh, granting many new mandates, many new pieces of work. And the tech has been able to rely on a diverse group of task forces uh, to perform this work. So we see the production of tech briefs, uh, which cover a range of areas from climate technology financing to particular forms of technology and which can be geared to a broad audience. Uh, we see in a more targeted fashion key messages to the conference of parties which are produced every year and which are resulting from the research that the tech has done, but also its deliberations internally and its, uh, the presentations it's heard from other experts. And more targeted than that, inputs to the um, Standing Committee on Finance and the advice that it's providing uh, to the GCF and to the GEF evaluations of activities under the convention, uh, as well as inputs to other processes under the convention, um, the Green Climate Fund's annual meeting and others. So we see a diversity of mandates here coming from the COP and the task forces across these areas which you see here uh, assisting the tech to perform its work. And an important point here is that of course the tech always has the ultimate say on what goes forward from the task forces uh, to the COP or to other, other communities of interest there. So I have also been asked to mention how tech products uh, are useful and are used by parties, uh, but also at the sectoral levels. And a couple of observations here. Uh, first one is that, of course, uh, the tech's information, its, its knowledge products, uh, can directly inform policy processes and dialogues, uh, and that's something that we've witnessed particularly in the last couple of years. And indeed, it also is the case that the tech's uh, outputs, particularly its research briefs, uh, working papers and others, can inform the development of other products um, under the UN and more broadly to assist parties to implement the Convention and the Paris Agreement. One example here is the newly developed Law and Climate Change Toolkit, which the UNFCCC Secretariat, UN in Environment and the Commonwealth Secretariat have collaborated to produce and, and which was discussed today. And I, I can tell you that in particular the tech's work on climate technology financing was a very important input uh, to scoping the horizon of the kind of legal inputs and the kind of legal interventions uh, which parties can consider uh, in this area. In addition, the tech's uh, outputs also feed into sectoral uh, discussions and deliberations. Uh, again, uh, speaking in the realm of climate technology finance, uh, work which has been done in the City of London uh, has drawn on tech outcomes, tech products, and, and that's something that uh, we have every hope uh, will continue. Uh, a final point before I conclude, I have also been asked to reflect on further opportunities for the tech uh, to strengthen its outcomes through collaboration with stakeholders. A couple of points here, and, and the important linkages with the uh, 2030 Sustainable Development Framework has already been mentioned. Particularly under that, the technology facilitation mechanism, 
um, under the SDGs and the Addis Ababa Agreement, uh, there are further opportunities to deepen tech engagement with that body, uh, particularly as it has been operationalised, particularly in the last couple of years. And there is an ongoing dialogue uh, between the two bodies, which is very uh, positive in that regard. In addition, uh, we see the development of new international organisations and financial institutions. Um, already the tech is, is engaging very strongly with a number of established international organisations, uh, WIPO for one, IRENA for others. But now we see new bodies coming uh, to the fore and, and being based in China, to give one example, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank is becoming very active in the climate and clean energy space, uh, perhaps another potential partner for the tech there um, through the task forces and more broadly. And, and a final point about the substance of the tech's work. Um, there are any number of technological developments that the tech can address. Um, I would mention digitalization, the development of uh, the Internet of Things, and uh, the broader digitalization of the financial economy, financial technology, fintech. What opportunities are there um, that the tech can add value to, uh, both in improving our energy and electricity systems, but also more broadly? And what are the stakeholders uh, in that domain that the tech could engage? So we've already seen very positive engagement with non-party stakeholders as well as parties, stakeholders, and many parties are already attending the tech regularly as observers, uh, but a lot more potential going forward as we work towards implementing the Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals. So with that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen, for your uh, for, uh, for 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 letting us uh, know uh, the observer's perspective and and also pointing out the different uh, in the different uh, venues and processes where the the tech products are being used. Uh, that's a different perspective and 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 very interesting. Now, uh, even though I'm doing very poorly and keeping the time, I think that we should open the floor for some questions to. Uh, to Michael, Claudia, and uh, and Stephen, do we have any one walking around with microphones, or should we just uh, I'm looking for the secretariat? Yeah, here we have. So you, you raise your hand. If you raise your hand, uh, stand up and and present yourself and 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 ask your question. Yes, please. Hi, Isabel Schrickel of Hanna University. I would like to know um, how the tech or if the tech addresses the issue of negative emissions or of climate mediation technologies that are certainly also needed at some point to keep the 1.5 degrees temperature target. Thank you very much. Shall we take some more questions before we, uh, we let the presenters answer? Yes, please. Moa uh, Hibba, Sudan. Actually, the, the role of tech uh, are not well identified for me uh, with the background that uh, it is a technology expert group. And with the background we have as a developing countries, we have we facing uh, barriers in, in technology diffusion. We face uh, financial barriers, uh, technical barriers, uh, and even cultural barriers. Um, I'm expecting uh, main roles from tech to f uh, face in these challenges. Thanks. Thank you very much. There is uh, one more question over there, please. Uh, and one there. So there first, and then. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, to follow in line with the first question, uh, not just negative emission technologies, but does the tech also look into possible technologies concerning either cloud winding, solar radiation management, and other technologies to reduce the heating of the Earth's uh, atmosphere directly? Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we have uh, one question over there first, and then uh, finally in, in the front. Okay. Yeah, my name is uh, Onduri Machulu Fred, former chair of the CTCN Advisory Board. And uh, 
Uh, this is just a, a clarification. Or oh, I would like to find out uh, in the t uh, this is a relation to the presentation from the chair of the tech, saying they have enhanced their collaboration with the CTCN. I would like to know within this collaboration, how can one tell who is responsible for the implementation of the outcomes of the TNAs? Because it is better to put a, a demarcation so that when parties are raising issues about the implementation of the outcome, they do not go uh, to any place we would know the responsible institution for the implementation of the outcome of the TNS. Then uh, the other issue is uh, the link with the, with the CTCN and other processes. I didn't hear from the tech chair how they participate in the, the NAPs. Do they have any role in the NAP process? Maybe you could clarify on that one. Thank you. Thank you very much. There was one uh, question in the front here. Yeah, and then and then one in the in the middle of the dot, and then I think we should close the list and let the presenters uh, answer. Please. Uh, well, my name is Mona from Egypt. I want to ask about the benefits for applying technology for multi sectors like waste, transport, uh, energy. These mutual benefits, if it is have uh, uh, implementing any uh, uh, progress in these fields. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. And uh, we have one last question in the middle here. Thanks very much. My name is Una Fitzgerald. Uh, I'm from the Center for International Governance Innovation. Thank you for your very interesting presentations. I was wondering if any of your uh, projects uh, would be looking at uh, blockchain technology and um, digital uh, distributed ledger technology, which could be useful in dealing with the many issues of either getting power to um, to off grid locations and funding that, um, and and also helping with funding of some of these projects and and managing that, as well as um, in reporting obligations under the Paris Agreement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then I think we should uh, ask um, uh, the presenters to, to, to start responding. Uh, maybe I can give the word to you first, Michael, and, uh, and we will uh, take it from there. Well, first of all, uh, we, we are not looking into uh, individual technologies, and uh, very much we are more on a general um, level. So, And we haven't uh, really spent any any time on, on uh, negative uh, energy, uh, what do you, uh, is that how you call it, negative energy production? Or? Negative Sorry, negative, neg negative emission uh, technologies. Uh, that, that is, of course, something that we could, could do, but um, it hasn't been done. On, on uh, technology diffusion, I guess that was, uh, a question over there on if we're doing anything of that. We are touching on that area, I would say, on when we're in our briefs on uh, innovation and uh, uh, I guess in, in ma many of our briefs, so we're touching on, on the diffusion issues. Uh, but again, I think we are considering that as an important area, so uh, we, we would probably touch on, the, on that again. On cloud technologies, we're not doing anything. We haven't done anything. Uh, we don't have any plans, as I know, at the moment. But I, I don't exclude that someone would like to take it up. Um, and the same goes for uh, uh, specific waste and, uh, and uh, transport technologies. We haven't looked into that area uh, yet. But these are certainly very interesting and, more, and important areas so and sectors so um, I would guess that we will do that uh, as we did with the energy efficiency sector in, in industry um, and uh, regarding um, NAPS I think I give the word to Claudia 
uh, to answer that, there was also something on uh, the TNAs. Yeah, the TNAs. Um, um, no, we are not uh, at all um, responsible. We don't feel responsible for the implementation of TNAs, but we are, we are, we do feel a responsibility for for uh, and take the responsibility for developing methodologies. And I think that uh, the implementation of, of TNAs should be sh lies more on CTCN and Jeff, for example. So uh, we are. We are not an implementing organization. We are. Uh, we don't have any uh, any financing. We are uh, uh, giving advice and policy advice. So, Claudia, can you please uh, answer the NAPS question? Sure. Um, so, regarding the NAPS, uh, this is very important work uh, that the tech is trying to undertake. We have uh, some collaborations uh, with the Adaptation Committee to do this. And uh, this is work that is uh, in progress. So hopefully next year we'll have some uh, products that, that can be helpful for, for the NAPS process. Uh, we have also been working on aligning the methodology for the TNA, uh, for the technology needs assessment in for different countries to the NAPS and to the uh, NDCs. So hopefully these guidelines will help countries do better assessments and think about the technology components as they go through their revision of the NAPs, through their revisions of the NDCs, and hopefully this will be uh, addressing some of, of, the, of the concerns that you raised about having more technology components on the NAPs. And if, if you let me, Michael, I would like to probably complement sure. a little bit uh, some of the other questions. Uh, regarding the negative emissions question, we did have some discussions at the tech about how to better link our work to the IPCC work. And as you know, there is an upcoming um, re special report on, on the 1.5 um, uh, issue on, on IPCC. And I think as IPCC starts uh, developing that work, we will also try to react a little bit on, on what are the key elements and what are the key technology challenges that, that come from, from, from that overall assessment. Uh, and also uh, regarding uh, the issue of, of some more uh, long-term probable technologies that will be needed in terms of managing and capturing heat. Um, and, and also um, regarding the blockchain question, I think this is a very important question and probably I think uh, I, I would like to answer that uh, as, as Stephen was mentioning, there are some topics that the tech uh, takes as part of their mandate. So if the COP and some parties are interested in this type of technologies, for example, for, for some of the transparency or reporting obligations that countries are discussing, of course, this can come as a, as a COP mandate. And I think um, if, if there is interest of, for some of the parties, this, this should come up as also as a, as a recommended topic, because there are so many topics on technology that the tech can undertake that it will be important to have uh, some 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 guidance from countries uh, so that we can discuss this at the tech. Uh, Stephen, please, uh, if you m also would like to make some comments to the question. Thank you. Uh, yes, very briefly, and to respond to the colleague from Egypt on uh, mutual benefits between different technologies. Uh, yes, uh, it's it's absolutely right that of course we can't just be looking at particular technologies in a siloed way, but looking at the the broader systems. And uh, the tech work on national systems of innovation uh, from a couple of years ago is addressing just that question of the feedback effects between different sectors as well as different institutions. Um, and also, if I could uh, respond to Una's question just by um, echoing Claudia's remark uh, that, uh, yes, uh, tremendous opportunities in fintech, in digitalization, uh, but of course, it, it, in part, it's in the hands of the parties as to which um, investigations they wish the tech to pursue. Thank you very much, Stephen. And that was uh, the end of the first part of the side event. So uh, please give uh, the three presenters uh, some applause. Uh, and uh, with that, I give the word to, to Michael, we'll, we'll, which will chair the, the second part of the event. Thank you, Marta. And um, I will immediately give the word back to you. Uh, <laughs> 
It's a little bit ping pong here. Um, and Matt, you are the chair of uh, Citizen Advisory Board, and, and um, Matt will uh, give some perspective on the the device. Yeah, I will send it. But uh, Matt will um, share with us uh, the advisory board's perspective on on issues relevant for the COP23 to begin with. Uh, you're welcome, Matt. Thank you very much, Michael, um, and thank you. Uh, I am pleased to be given this opportunity to, to give some perspective from the advisory board of the CTCN. You will hear Jukka uh, Usukainen speaking after me, and he will give you the update on the progress of, uh, of the work uh, of the CTCN. Uh, the slides on the screen that I will show you is only photos uh, reminding us that the CTCN and the work of the advisory board is about operations on the ground. And now I will see if I can handle this technology. Yes. Uh, this photo is from uh, Senegal, from uh, one of the, uh, it's a request from Senegal regarding energy efficiency. Uh, as, uh, as I see, there are three main issues relevant for the CTCN at this uh, COP. And firstly, uh, the, the CTCN has been reviewed by the independent uh, consultants. And uh, on behalf of the advisory board, I must say that we look forward to the consideration of the, of the review uh, that has already begun and uh, that the parties will uh, consider alongside renewal of, uh, renewal of the hosting agreement between UNEP and the UNFCC. This is important um, issues for the, for the, for the future of, uh, of the CTCN. Secondly, we also look forward uh, to the discussion of the technology framework and the discussion from parties of the kind of effort expected by the CTCN and, and the tech in that regard. Um, and thirdly, thirdly, we look forward to the discussion of the, the report given by the, by the CTCN. Uh, this, uh, no, I'm this photo is uh, from an adaptation project in, uh, in uh, Colombia. And I'm just uh, first going to address the, the issue of uh, the technology um, uh, framework. The CTCN advisory board was, uh, alongside with the tech, asked by the SBI 46 to make submission of its relevant operations to the technology framework. Uh, and uh, in its del deliberation, the advisory board found that its current work plan and mandate serve the Paris Agreement as a whole. Uh, we did highlight some efforts in the submission, which we hope have been uh, and are helpful for the discussions uh, by parties at this COP. Um, we also found uh, and submitted the fact that there are flexibility uh, in our mandate to take a step up uh, and provide regional technical assistance uh, with increased focus on transformative technologies. And we do think this is needed uh, in addition to responding to requests from individual countries. Um, uh, in addition, we have proposed that the CTCN extend uh, outreach to industrial associations to strengthen the, the collaboration with the private sector uh, and also to strengthen even further our relationship to the GCF. So these were some of the th issues that we highlighted in our submission uh, for the negotiations of the, of the technology framework. After we sent the submission, the relationship with the GCF has already evolved in a positive direction. Uh, at the GCF uh, 18th board meeting in Cairo in, septem in September and October, Michael and I was there and uh, uh, gave uh, some information on, uh, on research uh, development and deployment. Uh, and we appreciated that the GCF board agreed to develop a request or they, they agreed they made a decision to develop a request for proposals for incubators and accelerators in the context of innovation and technology. 
uh, and the tech and the CTCN will be part of the development of this request for proposal. I do see this type of collaboration uh, as cost effective, uh, a cost effective use of the competence and capacity of the different bodies of the, of the UNFCCC. Uh, Michael has already addressed that we will look uh, further into the collaboration with the tech and uh, CTCN and the advisory board uh, also look forward to, to, to that effort. I think I will leave to, to, to Yuka to, to talk about the progress on, on, on the, the special uh, requests. But uh, just to mention that um, the CTCN has now concluded 30 requests for technical assistance and will double that number in the next 12 months. But we do, do struggle to secure predictable finance. And as a result, uh, the I, we have established a, a task force uh, which has considered the role that pro bono and in-kind financing can, pli can play uh, an, uh, an additional security in this uh, regard. And uh, this builds on and addresses another challenge that we have also highlighted, and um, that is to establish uh, best practice for deeper engagement with the developed countries' uh, uh, NDEs. Uh, the role of the uh, industrial countries' uh, NDEs has not been uh, enough focused, and uh, I do. I do hope that the, the, the pro bono in kind contribution model can push more technical assistance implementation uh, to the network uh, and will help engage governments uh, to engage with the CTCN. This photo is from Indonesia. Uh, and uh, just some words on the independent review. Um, uh, for your information, the advisory board is uh, being reviewed, ha has been part of the review, so the advisory board has not looked uh, into, into that uh, and not discussed it as such. That's left to the COP. Uh, but uh, we have, of course, uh, read it carefully, and uh, I think I can say that uh, I find the review sound. Uh, and uh, the advisory board has already and in parallel separately uh, addressed and discussed many of the issues raised. Uh, the advisory board look forward to the guidance of the parties with respect to the findings of the review and we have already asked the secretariat to incorporate the findings uh, from this COP into a vision document that we will, will be considered at the next meeting of the advisory board in the spring. Uh, due to the time constraint, I think uh, I will uh, I will leave it uh, here, and I look forward to to the discussion and the questions that you have, and uh, also look forward to to the um, the progress update of uh, of Yuka. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mette. Thank you for, for giving us some perspective on, on the issues which are discussed during the negotiations here regarding uh, CTCM and also the challenges and opportunities you are facing. So uh, with that I will give the word to uh, Jukka Usakainen who is the director of CTCM and uh, Jukka will uh, uh, present more uh, uh, operational aspects of the CTCM work. Th thank you very much, and indeed, I now I'm going to run through very quickly some ten slides. So uh, please keep in keep in mind eyes on your sli these slides, and then think about the uh, questions to to ask because we have only 15 minutes or so left. Um, um, just to, to to remind that yes, indeed, we are part of the technology mechanism. We are sister body, operative body for um, uh, the technology executive committee. And therefore, we can take advice from the Technology Committee also directly, and we are intending to do. So when Technology Executive Committee is coming with its briefs, we uh, will take them seriously and try to disseminate that information to our customers in developing countries. Uh, that means national designated entities and others. Um, oh, this is so great. Uh, just how many? 
presses I have until I have all of this. Um, um, to to uh, emphasize that uh, we we work both on mitigation and adaptation. Sometimes people think that that CTCN is for mitigation technologies, and, and this is, has to be corrected within the convention and audience. We are as interested in adaptation and its technologies. They are different, but there are technologies for adaptation skills, uh, good practices, and so on. The, the technical assistance is our main service for developing countries. More than 70% of our resources will go for technical assistance. The other functions are important, knowledge sharing and collaboration and networking, um, but we focus uh, on serving the countries directly. And here you see the history, how it happened, how it started uh, in early, actually, 19, uh, 2014. And let's see that we are at least happy that we have already concluded and completed technical assistance projects up to 30 or so. Uh, there are indeed uh, one, almost 100 active technical assistance with uh, more than 70 countries on the field where our experts are working there now or planning uh, this technical assistance. Um, there, let's say that there are, it, we call them um, inactive, that means that they are still under consideration with the governments, with the national digital entities. There are some discussions going on on, on, on some uh, uh, assistance projects, uh, which we still want to clarify how to best uh, achieve, the, for example, the NDC goals. Um, what we are really doing, um, this uh, pie chart actually tells that, that uh, over half of our technical assistance is uh, looking at the feasibilities of technology, piloting and deployment of technologies in local conditions, and identifying and prioritizing technologies. So I think that that is a really a core function of CTCN. But also some 30% of our work is on that decision-making level. Uh, uh, and, and actually looking at the sectoral roadmaps and strategies. So this is that policy level, which is most imp very important in order to make that enabling environment in the country to bring in technologies or develop new technologies. And this uh, dark um, part tells that we are uh, interested in financing. That means that some countries, 10% 10, 10 of our requests are from the countries who need to link the technology into financing and, and, and get that kind of advice also uh, from us. Um, what kind of sectors the countries have brought to us? And, and, and you see the adaptation and the mitigation sectors, agriculture, forestry, uh, water, coastal zones are predominant in adaptation, energy efficiency, renewable energy, naturally uh, there in the mitigation. Let's, I, I, what I have seen here is that this is very much matching with the findings from the, the tech on, on their technical need assessment and TAP processes. So it, exactly the same sectors are coming out from the countries themselves. We are both uh, country-driven mechanisms. That means that we are looking at what the countries are interested in, in getting advice uh, from. So these are the, the sectors. Um, we are serving uh, the countries through our network. That is the, what the parties decided already in Cancun some seven years ago. And we have already uh, got more than 400 members in the CTC network uh, from 75 countries. Um, and uh, as you see, there is a geographical distribution. We are awaiting for institutions from Africa especially to come up and offer their services through our network. Um, the private sector is the major group in this network. That means that those who are actually prone to actually serve the countries and, and are uh, involved in our uh, inter international uh, procurement process through our UNIDO host, um, uh, they are in, in that one and, and, and coming to you. But also research academic institutions and uh, non-profit uh, NGO institutions are uh, uh, important uh, part of our network. The question is, of course, how we engage that the huge expertise, huge mass of expertise which we have got here. Um, what comes to their expertise by sectors, uh, you see that we have um, uh, dozens, even, even hundreds of institutions who are, have specific expertise in certain mitigation sectors as well as adaptation sectors. 
But indeed, um, it is important because if we are running competitive bidding for the country, that means that we try to get the best expertise with the least cost for the service or for developing country, we need many bids so, so that to choose from. So we can't just have rely on one institution to serve. So that uh, is going through competitive bidding. That's why we need quite a number of institutions to bid. Um, during these three years, uh, we, have, uh, we have already learned something on, from these uh, technical assistance requests from the countries as well as how we have been implementing them. And this is just a one take, one kind of sample of uh, such interesting technology tools or approaches or, or solutions which we have found uh, uh, interesting and even something to, to, to be upscaled, to be uh, disseminated uh, across the regions uh, or within the region. Uh, and, and, and these are coming from real cases from our countries and our customers. Uh, from, from Thailand, Zimbabwe, SADC countries, Peru, Guinea, Kenya, and so on. I don't want to go into now, I don't have time, but, but uh, we are starting to get a kind of crisp and understanding of what could be those, let's say, transformational paradigm shift technologies, uh, which could be introduced to countries more also as, as a package, uh, package uh, uh, kind of offers. Oh, yeah. Um, we also do innovation. That means the Paris um, uh, uh, decisions asked and requested us to uh, do more on innovation, uh, research and development, and, and for in indigenous technologies. And what we did also is that we had our own meetings. We followed the tech. We participated with the tech meetings and had our own meetings. One uh, lesson learned was that, that technology itself indeed doesn't make the change. We have to put together the government policy support, the, the financial mechanisms, and then the markets from the private sector. All these together with the innovation will make that change. And, and this is actually what we call in technology community a technology roadmap, putting everything together in a, a kind of time scheduled manner with benchmarks. And, and that makes uh, the, the change. Also, we found out that where the CTCN is maybe best at is the kind of looking at so-called first-to-market approach. That means that the, the technology which is not yet in the country, which needs to be introduced in the country, but it is already proven technology. It already the risk has been kind of tested in a, a maybe other region or other country, but it needs to be adapted to the local conditions of the country, that will be maybe the most fruitful and lowest hanging fruit in the technology transfer and, and development. Um, we are looking at, of course, supporting indigenous technologies and capacities. And there, we actually commissioned our consortium partner, ENDA, to map out a indigenous technologies from the West Africa. Uh, and they are kind of giving that assessment to us very soon, and we can learn from that, uh, that end also. Um, we, we are very uh, sensitive on, on gender uh, responsive tr technology transfer, and, and we, we have included gender uh, 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 kind of uh, considerations in all of our uh, actions. That means when we are planning technical assistance requests and when we are implementing um, uh, of, of this, uh, we, we have a, a specific gender guidelines uh, implemented. Um, coming to a little bit of finance, uh, we are indeed collaborating with Global Environment Facility already for three years with a kind of pilot uh, project, technology project, where already seven, seven countries have been receiving uh, uh, technical assistance uh, through that funding. Um, also, a very important new feature, indeed, which uh, the chairperson said, is that, that we are looking for developed country uh, NDEs and their institutions to come with us to, to support and, and help uh, developing countries on a kind of pro bono basis, basis. If they have a certain expertise, willingness, maybe resources, uh, to come and, and join us with the technical assistance service uh, for developing countries. And indeed, Japan and South Korea has already taken this challenge and, and has, have come to with us. 
Um, the, the major collaborative system uh, with the uh, financial mechanism is de definitely Green Climate Fund, and there the parties have urged us to collaborate. Uh, and we actually have a wide mandate uh, to draw Green Climate Fund uh, resources um, uh, both for the readiness uh, phases of the project preparation and concept making and feasibility studies, and even to a project preparatory facility phases. And, and there we have already agreed between the secretariats on certain, certain modes of, uh, uh, of, of work. Uh, for example, we, are, um, we have been conducting jointly uh, regional meetings with the Green Climate Fund and CTCN, and, and we are also um, uh, th uh, agreeing or, or, or considering a kind of standardized model for capacity building for those countries who are not yet been able to access the Green Climate Fund resources um, uh, 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 and, and have not that kind of uh, capacity to, co to make those concepts which are needed. Uh, the last uh, board has uh, also decided, as, as Mette said, uh, a, a, a cooperation with the joint uh, RD and D, and uh, we are looking at the, the kind of new call for proposal for incubators and accelerators. Uh, just the one example of a, 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 a collaboration, uh, this is about Tonga, that means that with the Tonga we have uh, submitted a proposal to use uh, the readiness financing from of Tonga, uh, into, into uh, planning for energy efficiency master plan, um, and, uh, and this is now uh, ongoing. Um, yes, the, actually today we heard a pretty, uh, pretty clear uh, a kind of urge to us to be more clear and transparent and exactly explain our monitoring and evaluation process that was in the negotiations of the parties. And, and I need to just, uh, I, I want to take up this uh, just to, to explain that yes, indeed, we have a full monitoring and evaluation process and system in place where we look at the, 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 the targets and, and anticipated impacts in the pre-implementation, implementation and post-implementation phases. Uh, uh, so in order to answer the, the the convention parties as well as the wider audience that we are making difference. We are having not only outcomes of our technical assistance, but also impacts of this technical assistance in, in the concrete implementation. And, and we are uh, definitely uh, following this very closely. The similar, similar, as I said, we have same targets uh, also for the gender mainstreaming. For example, we apply uh, uh, an UN uh, uh, target of, of uh, having at least minimum 1% of all the technical assistance resources directed into gender expertise to be used so that we can guarantee that there is a gender expertise involved in our technical assistance processes. Uh, very, very shortly, um, the, the finance things, we have been blessed with uh, $50 million solid uh, pledges and, and uh, uh, offers from bilateral, some more than 10 bilateral donors, and with that we have been able to serve these 100 requests to developing countries, as well as a very, very uh, uh, sophisticated uh, uh, knowledge management system. Uh, this just tells uh, uh, the story of how we received the monies, what year and wh how we have been using those. It always takes some time before we get the engine going, so that's why it is, of course, uh, uh, for earlier we had we had these resources on. Um, I would not uh, be too pessimistic on, on this. It shows like that we are running out of the money in 2019, but it is only because these are the really confirmed uh, uh, pledges and resources, and we are expecting that we can indeed turn this curve up. Uh, that means that uh, successful negotiations with uh, additional bilateral donors, as well as some new. Uh, ideas on funding will bring us the resources which we are needing to, to serve the countries under the convention. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just uh, stop here uh, saying that, that we have this report um, where all the kind of details and examples we have got, please take it with you, or it is already in the web, and, uh, and there is a lot of explanation how we work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joka. We are uh, running a little bit late, but we have two more speakers. Um, Mr. Joseph uh, Amankwa-Bofo from uh, Ghana, 
uh, he's the national designated entity, and Ms. Leah Nicholson, uh, the Department of Environment in Antigua, Barbuda, and uh, they are go both going to give uh, um, their their uh, experience from as an IND and as uh, and as well as the how it is to collaborate with the uh, CTCN. And I hope you could stay a couple of more minutes. And I also would like to ask you to make it a little bit shorter than, of course. So I give the word first to um, Josef. OK, um, thank you very much. Um, I am just going to be brief about the presentation. And basically, I'm going to talk about how we have collaborated with the CTCN regarding some requests that we submitted to the CTCN. Um, basically, um, the request that we have submitted looks at um, mitigation and adaptation uh, request, and focus is basically on um, energy agriculture, coastal resilience, gender, finance, and uh, economic development. Basically, these are uh, where our, our request uh, has been drawn out from. Um, First, I'll talk about the Green Cooling Africa Initiative. Basically, this initiative looked at how to transit or promote uh, <coughs> climate-friendly and uh, sustainable cooling technologies, so far as uh, Ghana is concerned. And out of this, we actually have come out with a number of outputs. We have looked at an inventory of the refrigeration and air conditioning sectors which would help us have some kind of a basis in terms of what kind of mitigation activities we are going to do in those sectors. We have looked at technology um, gap analysis to look at what technologies exist so far as the refrigeration and air conditioning sectors are concerned, and what internationally best practice, uh, best technologies are also um, available. And basically, that is the direction in terms of looking at how would eventually mitigate emissions from this, the, um, this uh, sector. Basically, we are looking at a potential mitigation of about 30% in terms of emissions from the sector up to about 2030. Uh, we're also looking at some kind of um, indirect benefits in terms of emission from the sector, because uh, if you look at the sector, you're using energy to, to, to power your, your, your air conditioner or your refrigerator. And Looking at, in terms of percentages, you even get more benefit regarding the emissions for indirect emissions than the direct emissions. And that's about 70 to 70 to 30 percent in terms of emission reduction. You're also looking at re reducing fluorinated um, chemicals and substances. Um, and basically, the, the idea is that if you look at refrigerants that are used in these equipments, for example, in Ghana, we have mostly the equipment that are used in uh, air conditioners are R22. Um, and if you look at a GWP, the global warming potential of uh, R22, that, that is about 1,800. We are looking at moving from getting this, uh, reducing these levels in terms of uh, refrigerants to refrigerants that are more friendly, more um, low GWP, such as propane, which is about six in terms of uh, uh, GWP potential. We are also looking at some sustainable development benefits in terms of income, employment. Of course, we have technicians who are working on these uh, units who would benefit uh, immensely from, from this. Some foreign exchange earnings, so far as the uh, uh, importers are concerned. And some savings in terms of um, some energy, energy, uh, energy uh, increased energy uh, security. I also want to mention that in terms of our uh, national determined contribution, because of the potential we actually see in, in reducing emissions from the RAC sector, we have contributed, uh, we have actually included the RAC sector mitigation in our NDCs that we want to implement so far as Ghana is concerned. And if you look at the NDC, you want to unconditionally, it means that without any financial support, by 50% by 2030. And by, we want to make sure that we have some support in terms of financial support to also reduce emissions by 30% as at 2030. So I realize that as long as we have some potential in certain sectors, so far as the country is concerned, we want to capitalize on that and reduce our overall emission in the country. And of course, these are supported by the uh, underlying uh, sustainable uh, development goals. 
There's a second project that we are also currently working on that we submitted. Um, that basically is looking at crop resiliency and uh, that came out basically from the technology needs assessment that we, we did, which was basically for the agriculture and the water, water sector. So we came out with this um, the proposal that we are looking at, in improving resiliency of crops to drought through strengthened early, uh, early warning capabilities. And this is being supported by UNEP DHI, and we are currently looking at enhancing knowledge of special uh, distributed drought issues, increasing data accessibility of satellite information, that's the information that we're going to use to develop a tool, building capacity of drought forecasting and warning uh, uh, system management, and that would feed in, that would provide the necessary information to feed into how farmers can improve in terms of uh, their, their, their cropping or planting, and also for local decision makers. We also have had some financial linkages, that is what we've capitalized also with the support of CTCN to get some funding from Ghana's readiness support to help us in this particular um, uh, project. This um, project is also in alignment with um, our national determined contribution, uh, particularly the uh, adaptation sector, and that is looking at increasing climate resilience and decreasing vulnerability for agriculture and food sector. So everything that we are doing actually looks at what the country is focused on in terms of re uh, adapting or increasing resilience so far as uh, agriculture is concerned. There's a third project that is more of a regional project with the ECOWAS countries, and basically that is looking at mainstreaming gender for uh, climate resilient energy systems in West Africa. And basically that project includes all the West African um, ECOWAS countries, and it's looking at reviewing energy policies that are in these countries and are taking gender audit to ensure how gender can be um, included in policy making, uh, develop gender responsive projects, develop commercial viable gender responsive uh, energy projects, and also have some coaching in technical and financial skills that would support um, the people who will be involved in the project. There is a fourth project that is looking at West Africa coastal classification and hazard management. And that basically is also looking at some uh, uh, few countries, uh, Ghana included, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, Gambia, Togo, and uh, Sierra Leone, Senegal. And basically what the, this project is going to do is to establish a regional coastal classification, hazard management, and standardization communication scheme that will be uh, utilized in terms of a coastal hazard wheel. And the assistance is in also to help in liaison with international financial institutions and donor countries for subsequent implementation and scale up of the management uh, uh, measures. So basically, there are a number of activities that Ghana is involved in so far as CTCN is concerned. And this briefly describes some collaborations we have had so far as uh, uh, Ghana and CTCN are concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf, uh, and I give the word uh, directly to Leah, as we are a little bit late. You're welcome, Leah. Thank you very much, and good evening, everyone. Uh, while the presentation comes up, um, my, I'm from the Department of Environment in Antigua and Barbuda, and we have received two uh, technical, well, so we're, we're actually, we've developed a workforce development strategy for our NDC mitigation goals. Uh, with the support of CTCN. And uh, what I want to do very briefly here is really try to touch on one of the questions we had earlier is when a country accesses the technical support and the knowledge, um, how do we achieve this harnessing the technology for the Paris Agreement? So we have this great legal document, a multilateral document, and um, how do we make it really happen in practice? Uh, 
So this is our theory of change, like a good project developer. So we have our Paris Agreement. Uh, what I'm going to touch on briefly is the market mechanism and the potential for this scaling up. Um, the, how we now take the Paris Agreement and we make it consistent with the financial flows. So we heard about the innovation in financing and technology as an enabler. And then I want to talk about loss and damage in light of uh, some of the things that we've seen this year. So when, uh, when we access the technology needs assessment and the workforce development strategy support from CTCN, where do we go? So we're seeing more uh, coherence with the GEF and the GCF. Um, and then we had a Poznan strategic plan. And we have the adaptation fund also doing some small scale um, adaptation work. Uh, but when we're looking at you know, trillions of dollars that is needed to achieve low emission climate resilient development, these are clearly not going to be adequate for what we need to achieve. And this is the first time I'm at an event with questions about geoengineering, which is a new phrase we're in. So market mechanism, what's the precedent? We have the clean development mechanism, which uh, transferred a, a $17 billion worth of technology. There's, it's definitely not perfect. It has a lot of limitations, but something that can set a scale, something for our roadmap for the scale that we need um, the urgency with. And tech with the policy guidance, CTCN with this new network that we're seeing, these can be critical um, institutions to help us get there. And I should also say that I'm here in my capacity as Department of Environment and Climate Negotiator, which probably <laughs> explains a little bit of this. But just briefly, the financial flows. So we're seeing um, some mainstreaming of the Paris Agreement into the um, the GCF and the GEF, uh, the GCF in particular in terms of the trustee and the accredited entities. But, um, and this can help to start to shift and bring scale. We are a small island. You know, we need to be strategic about how we can start to scale some of these objectives. Finally, uh, on the CTCM website, we have climate technology. Is any equipment, technique, practical knowledge, or skill needed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions or adapt to climate change? And something that we're really focusing on now is that last thing is loss and damage. Is This is a photo of Barbuda in September after Hurricane Irma passed through. So you could see if there were solar panels on that roof, they would no longer be there. We're looking at climate impacts at a scale that um, is earlier than expected. And this puts the, CT, the country's investments and the, the you know, supporting entities' investments at risk. Um, and we need the CTC, we need technology to understand loss and damage and how we start to prevent um, these permanent <laughs> potential losses, how we deal with early warning systems, how we deal with climate risk. Um, and I will just end with a, on a more um, hopeful note, this is our minister who now drives an electric vehicle. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, it helps to give that kind of signal. And just finally, with respect to Barbuda, uh, CTCN has been really helpful because we went to them and we, they're, we're in, you know, identifying the support to assess our critical infrastructure, like our hospitals, um, our police stations, our uh, fire stations, so that when we get a Category 5 hurricane, uh, we, those critical services can be still functioning so the country doesn't shut down like what we've seen in other islands happening. Um, and so that technical assistance has been really helpful because we don't necessarily have the expertise to deal with some of these new uh, impacts that we're seeing, like a Category 5 hurricane, which could be the new norm. So that's really, uh, I would like to support that adaptation aspect of the technology transfer. So thank you for the time. And I think we, go, we have a party next door to get to, right, <laughs> from what we heard. So yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, Leah. Now I open it up for questions to the four speakers. I think the gentleman there, yeah. Uh, I have a light in my face. I don't see very much, mm -hmm. but could you present yourself also, please? <laughs> 